Want fast, cleaner cuts with your Mega? Stick around. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Brett, and this is my laser garage. My wife and I run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you grow your laser or CNC business. Today, we're back working with the Monport Mega Laser. If you own this machine, you already know the stock air assist leaves a lot to be desired. You know, it's a common issue, especially with desktop style lasers. There just isn't much room to work with inside the cabinet. And even though the Mega is a huge desktop unit, space inside the case is still limited, which means the stock air pump is, well, pretty underwhelming. Honestly, it looks more like something you get from a small diode laser. But today, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna show you how to easily upgrade this setup with a much more powerful air assist system. And the results speak for themselves. Cleaner cuts, way less char, and seriously improved performance. Let me show you what we're gonna need to make this upgrade possible. First, you'll need a 24 volt pneumatic solenoid. This is basically an electronically controlled valve that switches your air on and off automatically. You'll also need some six millimeter or quarter inch air tubing and a few fittings. I'll show you exactly which fittings I use later on, but I'll also link to the air tubing kit I picked up along with everything else in the description below. The kit I'm using comes with a wide variety of fittings, so you've got plenty of options and lots of extras. You'll also need a rubber grommet, and finally, you'll need a regulator, and of course, an air compressor. Pretty much any air compressor will work, but your tank size and CFM rating will affect your performance and duty cycle. Personally, I really like using these eight gallon ultra quiet compressors from California Air Tools. They're a great price and they perform really well. Now that we've got all the parts ready to go, let's open up the laser and start the install. To start, make sure your laser is unplugged. Then we'll open up the access panel on the right side of the laser. To do this, you just have to remove two screws on the bottom of the panel. I find it best to slide the laser just slightly off the edge of the table to be able to reach these screws easier. With the door removed, leave the emergency stop and USB wires connected and move it out of the way on top of the laser. Now we can see the stock air pump located here, but we won't be needing this any longer, so let's get rid of it. To remove the stock air pump, slightly prop open the right side of the laser a couple inches. I like to place a two x four or other offcut of wood underneath to get some distance between the bottom of the laser and my bench. You'll need this clearance to remove the plastic clips located here. I used two pairs of needle nose pliers to remove these clips. One pair pulled the rubber foot down and the other popped off the clip. With the clips off, you can remove the black rubber air lines from the front outlet of the pump. But before we can remove the pump completely, we'll have to deal with the wiring. Turn the pump upside down and remove the screws from the access panel underneath. With the access panel removed, you'll see two wires, a black and a red. Clip off these wires with wire cutters and set them aside. We'll reuse them in a minute. Now the pump is free to be removed from the laser. Next, we'll hook up our solenoid. Remove the solenoid from the box and install the inlet and outlet quick connect fittings. These fittings are included with the solenoid as well as the Teflon tape used to make sure they don't leak. Next, remove the screw on top here and remove the transparent gray cover. Go back to your red and black wires we removed from the stock pump and strip them both back about a quarter inch or so with wire strippers. Feed these wires through the inlet of the solenoid cover and insert the wires into the terminals here. It doesn't matter which wire goes to what terminal, either way works. After the wires are inserted, tighten them down and replace the cover with the screw. I'll set the solenoid aside here for now and start working on the air plumbing. In order to complete these steps, you'll need to remove the back cover of the laser. There are screws on the inside of the laser and also a couple underneath the rear cover. Carefully remove the cover partially by lifting it straight up. I like to then rest it on the back of my table and remove the three wires from the power cable connection so I can completely remove the cover. It's handy to take a picture of these wires so you can remember their orientation when you go to reinstall. With the rear cover removed, 
we have clear access to the remaining plumbing parts. Now, find the black rubber hose that was originally connected to the air pump outlet. As you follow this hose back, you'll see a three-way connector that splits the hose to the fire suppression system and to the laser head. Disconnect the large diameter black hose and set it aside. You'll no longer need it. Now remove the remaining two airlines from the splitter. Replace this splitter with a 6mm Y from your airline kit. Connect the two stock airlines to the Y and cut about a 12 inch section of 6mm airline, which will connect to the other end of the Y. Route this new section of airline back into your solenoid and connect it to the outlet labeled out. Now you can carefully reinstall the rear cover. Just do the reverse of the steps we took to remove it. Now we're going to install our air inlet plumbing and fittings. To start, let's go back to our right side access panel. You'll need to drill a hole in this panel for our new airline to pass through. I like to use a punch and a step drill bit to drill about a half inch hole through the metal door. Install the rubber grommet from our kit in this hole to protect our new six millimeter airline we're going to pass through it. I simply cut about 16 inches or so of six millimeter air tubing, passed it through the grommet and installed it to the inlet of the solenoid marked in. Leave about an inch or so of this hose sticking out through the front of the access door and reinstall the access door. I then added a 90 degree quick connect to the stubbed out portion of the airline. Next, I mounted my regulator near my laser and air compressor. And finally, I ran more air tubing from my compressor to the regulator and from the regulator to the 90 degree fitting out on the outside of my laser. For cutting wood, I like to run about 20 PSI, which is controlled through the regulator reinstall. And for engraving, I mostly turn the air assist off. And that's it. Now our Mega is set up to run shop air from our external air compressor, yet still retaining the stock feature of being able to toggle your air assist on and off through our software. Look, I know it's a bit of work to get everything set up, but the results are absolutely worth it. Check this out. Here's a couple material test cards using the stock Mega Air Assist on 2mm basswood and 3mm MDF with a white oak veneer. Now, here's the same test, but with our upgraded setup. The difference is clear. Cleaner cuts, less charring, and noticeably better overall performance. If you want to get the most out of your Monport Mega, I definitely recommend doing this upgrade. I've linked everything you'll need down in the description, so check it out and level up your laser game. Also, if you're looking for fun, profitable laser projects, check out my Etsy shop. I've got digital files for things like custom piggy banks and graduation money holders that I showcased in an earlier video. Both cut beautifully on this Mega with the upgraded air assist. They're great sellers, especially this time of year. And as always, if this video helped you out, hit that like button, subscribe, and drop a comment if you got any questions. I'm always here to help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.